Hello everyone, it's the Phantom Guy here, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to Middleburg and the old Iron series, and we are back here at the production point because I have noticed something. I'm going to just pull up just here. We have got a lot of rolled barley here, a good amount of it. Uh, but I've just looked at the productions and the sales, and look at this. Corn whiskey and whiskey sell at their peak in August, which is where we are at the moment. After that, they absolutely tank. So I am going to get as much of this into the production points as possible. I'm going to use the main production point as well as my little moonshine still up in the hills. And we're going to get as much of this done as possible. If not, we're going to have to hold on till next year, I think, before we sell it. It's too... Uh, too much of a drop in price to not do that. So, straight into the forklift truck. Let's get started. There we go. Eight more stacked up. Now, I will say... Every time I loaded those up, another set appeared, and I was like, oh my goodness, we are going to have so much of this. Now, there is another, what's there, 10 left there, so we could do another run later on. But for now, this will do us. As you know, these are phenomenally overloaded, and it uh, does not really do my handling much good in this truck. But uh, we'll get this over to the main whiskey plant, and we'll get it in and produce it. Okay, here we are. Ski Distillery. Now, I think we need to drive around the other side of this. Get it unloaded. We've done well not to roll it so far. It is very wobbly. We should be able to unload this into one of these points here, I think. Sell point or production. So we're going in the right one here. I just have to check the sign there. First time here and all that. There it goes, unloading nicely. Very good. Right, we'll leave that running. We are going to rush back to the farm because time's against us a bit. We've got another field to mow and we've got to get some uh, of that grass into our fermenting silo as well. So we'll come back and maybe get rid of a few or more of those pallets of uh, rolled barley later on. But for now, let's get back to the farm. Right, here we are back at the farm. I am going to go straight past the farmyard, though, and head right up to our second field up here. And I have to say a massive thank you to everybody who left comments after the last video. I hold my hands up and, do you know what, I don't know, complete brain fade or whatever it was. Of course, Courseplay can map out its own fields, but for whatever reason, um, I had a total kind of mind melt and uh, completely forgot about that and was just in robot mode. So. Uh, you were all legends for uh, pointing that out and uh, reminding me about that. And as soon as I read them, I was like, of course I can. What an idiot. So there you go. Hands up. Totally missed that one. My fault entirely. So up here is our second field. I've already driven around the edge of it now to mark out a field border. Hopefully we should be able to uh, dive straight in and get mowing up there, which means we can get the forage harvester up here and a trailer, and we'll uh, we'll get started. So here's our mower, sitting waiting. If I jump into this and get this started. You will see there we have a custom field called CP1. So I just need to create a job. Horse play field work. Target's not in a field, so what we need to do is find a field position that is within the boundaries of the field. There we go. Open course generator, multiple tools. We will do, I think, two headlands to let it turn around. We'll start working on the centers and we'll just leave it as that. Let's see what we get here. Looks pretty good to me. So if we go back now, I'm gonna hit start job and we can watch our uh, worker get started. We'll just turn off the start stops there. 
But away he goes. So we'll let him push on for a little bit. And we go and get the porridge harvester and some trailers set up. And we'll come back and see how he's getting on. Right, here we are back at the farm. And again, I want to say a big thank you again to all you lot um, for pointing out that as well as that Rostel Mash windrower, there is a tedder in that pack that looks exactly the same as well. So uh, I'm going to buy that again, just $1,300. So a really cost effective way of uh, getting the piece of machinery that we need. Well, I'm sure I'll upgrade it later on, but for now it'll do us perfectly. So we'll get that delivered. We'll pop that onto the John Deere and then we'll take things from there. Now, the other tether that we did consider was this LO one here. You can adjust the width of the swath that comes out as well, which I thought was very nice. But it's $7,000. And at the moment, with the money we've got, I think we're going to plump for this one. We'll leave the rakes in yellow. So we know there is a difference between this and the wind rower. But uh, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. So let's order that. I'll get delivered to the farm. And we will get started. Right, here we are. We're going to leave the main field ahead of us there. We're going to use that. That's grass. Uh, I think the bigger field, we're going to need more silage than we are hay for when we're making our TMR. So definitely the smaller field here is the one that we want to work on. Uh, and as you can see, the mower working away there very nicely. And dusty lands. We have dusty lands. A demo version of dusty lands installed. And as you can see, dust coming off the grass. It looks really good. We also had a little bit coming off the back of the tractor as we came up the hill there, you may have noticed. But we'll leave this here now. And we'll head back we'll get the forage harvester. Okay, forage harvester out. Then we will come back. We will grab the little Alice and the uh, forage box over there. And what we're going to do, we're going to record an unload course for auto drive. So we can bring it back to the farm and unload it. What we'll do is we will drive this and uh, we will let the tractor run autonomously to uh, unload and reload. Now, ideally, we would have two trailers. We don't have the luxury of that. So we'll just push on with just the one for now. So it means we'll have some breaks as we uh, pick up the grass. But uh, there we are. That's what happens when you've got a small farm. I suppose the other option is we could use the uh, the Massey Grain Trail. Let's see how we get on anyway. Let's see how we get on. But just how good does this look? Right, here we are. I am definitely considering, I know I mentioned it in the last episode, definitely putting a shed here. I mean, this is all grass equipment. These are going to be my grass fields. I don't see myself using any of the fields further down the hill uh, for grass, so it kind of makes real sense to have... Uh, shed up here and keep this equipment up here but that's for the future right now what we want to do is get this lined up here and we'll go and get that Alice sorted right that is us with the Mayer forage box hooked up now if I go into edit mode in auto drive here you will see we've got some rather nice course layouts already done here and that's a, a big thank you really to farmer ed gaming who you may know did a fantastic auto drive course for green valley he's now doing a work in progress uh, for middleburg and he sent me what he's done so far which just so happens to be where um my farm was which is very handy to have so there's your silo load and unloads for grain but what we want is to add a little bit more on for us because what we've got over here i'm trying to work out the best way to bolt this on now it's probably pop us over here somewhere i wonder if we actually come out and make a loop if we utilize that point there let's just turn this on and see how we get on i need to edit that first point a little bit move him around to there something like that Maybe our second point as well. We'll need to connect this as well. Take a bit of a loop around here and get under this 
rig a point here. It looks like actually we're going to luck in a bit here because there already is a point. It looks like it's working quite well. We do our obligatory thing there, rolling past quite far, and we will call this forage silo unload. There we go. And then we can head off up into the fields and see what Ed's done up there. So there we go, and we've got a nice trigger point here, Grass Meadow 1. I don't think we need to change anything with that, because it's a two-way point. We should be able to approach this relatively easily. Very good. Now what we need to do is make sure that this is set to Grass Meadow 1 as well. So it will talk to the tractor over here. And then we should be good to go. Right, I've turned this on. He's rolled to his point and he's going to wait. And now we'll head over to the forage wagon. And if we spin this up, get everything unfolded, we should be good to go. Pipe is out. Things spooling up, and here comes our tractor already. I love it when this happens. As intended. Gotta make sure he doesn't crash into us or anything. We'll do. We'll roll into the crop here. And we'll wait for him to arrive. Here he comes. Usually find with uh, auto drive, it takes a little bit of time, particularly on the headlands him to work out what's what. Now I've restricted him to the field as well so we may not go um, out with so on this outside ring he'll follow behind us. Look at him go. It's pretty slick. That's happened straight away without much hassle. That's good. I'm just gonna keep this straight now. Now, it's a long drive back to the farm, so I'm definitely considering setting up a second trailer, I think. Definitely on the cards. Right, he's filling up nicely. I'm just making a point of keeping an eye on uh, making sure I pick up the grass. We'll do these two headlands, and then we'll switch to the up and down rows. But I'm keen to just get a load full and away so that we can see... Uh, and see if it's actually going to work with the auto drive course or it needs a little bit of tweaking. It does mean, uh, like I said, that uh, we'll be sitting in the field for a while because it is a long drive back. But uh, we'll make it happen. Right, it is off. Um, I had it set actually in auto drive to. Uh, uh, unload level at 85% so I've bumped that back up now. We're just going to make sure and see if it goes onto the course which it looks like he's going to do very nicely. Very good. All we need now is for him to unload at the other end. So as we come back to the farm here I was just thinking uh, uh, in my head that if we have two trailers running here there's, there's a very possible risk of them uh, stuck because this is a two-way course I'm not sure there's any laybys or passing places on it so if you've got one coming down with a full load and one empty uh, it may cause us an issue because one will have to wait for the other to come all the way down that road equally um, getting stuck in the field as well so um, I'm not sure I'm almost tempted to let it uh, do its thing We have a slight issue here now because I've put a shed here. So I need to adjust this out slightly. To help get the tractor around that corner. That is nothing to do with Ed's course. He didn't know I was going to put a shed there. So I'll come back and edit that later. Let's see if the other bit works. It's the trigger on this. The uh, unload for this trailer is at the front. Unless it uses the rear. Don't know which it will be set to do. 
Let's find out. It's found it. I thought I was going to be too far over then. It's found it. That's fantastic. Okay, I am. I am a happy man. Right, we'll let that unload. We're going to edit that little bit by the um, shed over there before we head back up. But that. That's a really positive result. We'll take that. Well, we've just stopped because, um, totally out of the blue here, look what's happened. We've had a breakage. Looks like the, uh, one of the rods has snapped and it has rendered our right-hand front wheel on the forage box completely useless. Now, there's not much in here, because we'd only just come back. But that does cause a little bit of an issue. It's only 15% in here, but it does cause a bit of an issue. We need to recover this at some point. Uh, but that is us down a trailer already. So, what we'll do... I think we can drag this to the edge of the field. It looks like we can. So we're going to drag this to the edge of the field here. Right, we managed to get it off the field. But look at that. That is properly bust, isn't it? Not going to be an easy one to fix. Certainly not up here in the field. Right, this is really slowing us down now. It's already 5 p.m. We are running out of time today. And we haven't sold any of that whiskey yet either. We do not want to miss the boat with that price wise either. So let's push on. Let's see how, how far we can go with this. This does have silage sides, which we don't own. It would have been an ideal size trailer. But we're going to have to just manage. Tell you what, I'm glad the throw on this chopper is so good. Although I'm, I'm slightly confused as to why it doesn't want to run alongside us. But hey, it's working. And the predicament we're in at the moment is working is good enough for me. Because we've got to get all of this off as quickly as we can. Again, what's going to slow us down with this is this is a smaller capacity trailer than the forage box, so again more trips back to the yard more waiting time in the field for me but you know what, I'm not sure what else we can do right now, so we'll just push on it's pretty full already, isn't it right, we're back at the yard, we just thought we'd check and make sure that the trigger worked for this trailer as well and it does thank goodness for that so really, all we've got is uh, time on our hands to get through this. Right, one thing we are going to do is we're going to swap the tractors over because this is slightly bigger and we don't need a powerful tractor for doing the tedding. So what we'll do is we'll move this out of the way. We'll get the Alice hooked up and into the field and then we can sit back and relax and let everybody go to work. And there we go, running nicely now with the tractor alongside, which is what I was wanting. So I wonder if there's just something there with that Alice that it uh, wants to sit behind the forage harvester, but we've got something that looks like it should be working as intended now. So let's crack on and see how long this takes. Like I said, we will have some downtime, but uh, this is looking more and more like it. The battery is almost full already, though. Gonna have a lot of trips down to the uh, silo at this rate, but looking good now. That looks great, doesn't it?
Right, that is running as we wanted it to now, which is brilliant. However, we have another problem. Let me just show you up here. Now, my hope was that we would get this field done turned to hay while the other one was running. But look at this. So this is our header. If I drop this down, it doesn't ted. There's something wrong with it. I wonder if it's the latest patch that's done that. But this is an absolute waste of time now. So, we're going to sell that straight away. And we're going to go and try the Elo one that we uh, found the other day. See if that can get us out of a hole. It's going to cost us more money, which we didn't really want to spend. But uh, I don't think we've got a choice. Honestly, it's been one of those days. Comedy of error after error. But... Sometimes that is just the way it is, isn't it? Right, that's that unhitched. Let's sell that straight away and let's shell out the 7,000 for the other one. Well, here we are in Tedders. There it is. It's only 2.8 metres wide, so it's a lot narrower. But let's see how we go with this. Okay, here we are back at the field. Let's get this lined up. And just see if this works. And look at that, it does straight away. That's awesome. Okay. That works. I'm just going to let him get on with it. We'll go back to uh, getting those trailers filled. Right, we're back in the harvester. And I tell you what, the truck's still not back. It is a marathon trip down and back up here. We really need to think about maybe adding some little laybys. It's part of the auto drive course. So maybe I'll speak to Farmer Ed and... Uh, expand that course a little bit so we can have passing places and run more than one trailer okay finally the tractor's back we'll get started again we'll do one more trailer i think and then what we're going to do as the time is pushing on we need to load up some of our moonshine and get it organized and down and sold tonight because to be honest i don't want to miss out on that bumper payday and to be honest if we're paying for that new uh, tedder we're going to need the extra money, so um, maybe we could finish the day on a bit of a high with a bit more cash in the bank. Okay, there we go. He is just about full. We may make it to the end of this row before he gets completely brimful, but yes, this trailer with less capacity and has slowed us down a lot today. Um, but you know what? It's still been fun. Even if I has been sorting the problems out and trying to work out how to work our way around certain situations. So we'll just do a turn here. Hopefully the track will follow us. In fact, no. It looks like the tractor has decided it's full. So, I think on that note, what we'll do, we'll shut this down for the evening because we want to make sure we get the best price we can for that whiskey. Okay, Ted is looking good. Making good progress. I'm definitely going to bring the windrower up here and bring those into one uh, bigger row as well. Again, just to make it more efficient. But uh, yes, I'm glad that's working. It's another tick in the box. We can get those uh, bailed, I think, very soon. Right, let's try and close this episode out on a high because it looks like it's going to be a while till we can sell any more of this at a good price. So let's have a run down here and see if we can sell some of this whiskey. There we go, our first 4,000 litres of moonshine. Let's get it sold to the highest bidder. Okay, we're heading into town here. We have determined that Min's Bar is very close to the others in price, but just a little bit more. So 3264 per thousand litres. And we've got 4,000 litres here. So this is going to be a nice little earner. So we'll just hang a right here. It's way down the bottom of town. Now, I would say... Even though the window for selling this is 
very very narrow you can only really get a good price for it in August it's a worthwhile exercise and you could do a power of work to get a lot of stuff prepped to be sold so uh, definitely one to continue doing I think and uh, we'll see where we go I've got all our corn now as well so we could make uh, crack corn whiskey too but let's roll this over here and see if we can sell it there we go all gone thirteen thousand dollars just for that which has pushed us back up to thirty six thousand so not only have we paid for that seven thousand pound tether we've got a little bit more money in the bank okay folks i think we'll call it there for that episode it has been a day of trials and tribulations and broken machinery today so um hopefully next time i see you things run a little bit more smoothly but that said still had fun always uh interesting to try and work your way around the problem so i think we will head back home now we will put our feet up and get a well-earned rest so thank you very very much for watching i hope you're enjoying the series still i certainly am um, lots of potential still in this map and the mods that we found so i look forward to seeing you all again in the not too distant future so from me for now thank you very much for watching take care and i'll see you all again very soon bye for now Don't